Hello everybody and welcome to part 23 of our Practical Flask web development tutorial series. In this video I'm going to be talking about the actual dashboard on Python Programming.net, how it works, how we do the percentage completed and all that fun stuff. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So coming over to our dashboard, you can actually see the code for the dashboard is relatively short. Um, all it's actually doing, and some of this code is not even necessary, but um, here, at least, for, for dashboard, first of all, we do a try, accept, try, accept, try, accept, try, okay, and this is just string E exception, um, again, I wouldn't really suggest you leave that in any sort of, this is for a development, uh, I wouldn't suggest you leave string E uh, actually reporting on your real website, just keep that in mind. Um, so anyways, we got to try and accept, try and accept, try and accept. Then we have the client name, settings, tracking, and rank equals this user information function. So let's go visit that user information. So here is our user information function, slightly longer, um, spaced horribly. Pep8 for the win. Now uh, we've got try. The client name is just equal to whatever our session username happens to be. If that works out, guest is false. Uh, so we're going to try that, except if we can't figure that one out, uh, guest is just true and client name will be guest. So anytime we refer to the client, we're going to call them guest. Um, if not guest, what do we want to do? Well, we're going to need to connect to the database. We're going to select from users where the username equals whatever the thwarted version of the client name is. Now, again, you have to be so careful with SQL injection. Um, and I'm by no means perfect, but here's a perfect example of where you might consider, well, at this point, right, because we go over here and we're saying client name equals session username, how would they get a session username? Well, they have to log in successfully, right? So if they log in successfully, why do we still need to thwart the client name? Because client name is getting it from the successful login, which already thwarted the login or the username, right? Well, yes and no, because session username, it's it's possible to fake a session. It's possible to fake cookies. It's, all that stuff is possible. So what someone could do is modify the cookie to contain a uh, some a SQL injection for e for the username even, and especially when you're going to post your code publicly, like this code is going to come out and people are going to realize that okay, so here in this line he's uh, doing, you know, getting this username. Where's that come from? Oh, so I can modify the session. Great. So you have to be really careful about that kind of stuff. And um, I wouldn't be too surprised if by the time I post all of this code up, someone's going to point out some serious, you know, security flaw. That's just kind of what happens. Although I still think open source is probably one of the best security things you can do because you find out what your problems are rather than letting someone else find them out. Um, secretly, anyway. Uh, so anyways, you want to thwart this because someone could modify their session and their cookies and all of that, and boom, now you've got an injection attempt right there. So anyways, that's why we're thwarting it. Then data equals C fetch one, and then here we've got some information here. The settings, the user settings, if they have any right now, they don't. Um, but if they did, there it is. Tracking, all the tutorials they've completed. Rank, again, I'm not really using rank. There's nothing greater. There's Everyone has the same account, even myself included. Why would I need an admin account when I have root access? <laughs> so anyway, uh, that. And if, if, uh, if they are a guest, right, then we just return this. Tracking, settings, all this stuff, zero. At the end of that, we return client name. Now, uh, since we're here, I guess we'll talk about the update user tracking function. This function runs whenever the user completes a web's, uh, web page. So, ooh, <laughs> uh, I apologize for any cuss words you might see in my comments. <laughs> Sometimes I get relatively angry uh, and write nasty words. So, sorry about that. Uh, this tutorial is for ages 13 and up, uh, maybe even... 18 and up in some of my comments. I'll have to remove them when I post this code live. Anyway, uh, so user tracking, and let me actually get rid of one of these lines I just saw. <laughs> anyway, coming back over. Uh, so user tracking does this. I, this was for debugging purposes, client name, blah, 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 blah. That just gets the user information uh, that we just discussed up here. Uh, then tracking, none. Tracking equals completed. That's from up here. Um, then we make the connection. So update user tracking. What it's going to do is it's going to update 
um, tracking based on uh, the current tracking for that user. So this comes down here. Um, so right here, for example, if completed, not in tracking, tracking equals tracking plus completed. So that might be somewhat confusing to you. So we're going to pop back down to the init uh, or the uh, actual each page's description here in just a second. Um, but then once we get that completed information, we update the database to contain all of the new tracking information. And then at the end of it, we just we do all of this one last time uh, to update those va uh, variables. So coming back down now to our, let's just do a page. What are, what's happening here is, let's say this is basics. This looks like, you know, one of the basics tutorials, like let's just do this one. So this is the what will generate the tutorial page for the basics tutorial, the fourth one um, in the series, right? So index of three really means the fourth one. What we do at this point is we update the user's tracking in whatever way we uh, need to, and then we also do completed percentages equals topic completion percent. All this is doing is it's comparing how many completed topics does the user have in comparison to the total amount of topics? So we'll, we can revisit this function uh, before we're done. But uh, what's happening here is, and actually here, is when we view this page, we're allowing get and post, and update user tracking is going to reference that because update user tracking, if we go back to that, define update user tracking. Um, completed equals this string version of request.args completed. So that is what was the post. So if we come down here, uh, let's go to, let me just go to pythonprogram.net real quick. Come here, click on this, uh, and we go to this while loop, for loop, and let's do one more, if statement. You'll see that the u this is the URL, right? And then after that, we've got this parameter, this uh, yeah, basic parameter, and then the parameter is completed equals, and it gives the uh, URL of the last completed tutorial. So if we cl click that one more time, we'll see completed equals if statements Python three. So we'll do that, and sure enough, completed equals if statements Python three. So it takes that, stores it in this completed uh, variable, and then if completed is in string topic dict dot value. So obviously people might get the idea to do. Um, another version of an injection so or just screw around for whatever reason but you could say completed equals like that obviously we don't want it to error okay but we don't also we also don't really want to do anything with that right so if it's in that topic dick dot values great um, if it is then what we're going to do is either if tracking is none, so there's no tracking for whatever reason. This is actually old code that doesn't that's not even possible anymore. Um, else, if completed is not already existing in the tracking, then we want to go ahead and add it to it. So tracking will equal tracking plus comma plus completed. This really actually not that necessary. It's just useful if you happen to look at it with your eyes, but it's actually just one really long string and we're just asking if the URL exists in that long string. Um, so when we're done with that, we connect and we update it. So what was the last thing I want? I can't remember what the other thing was that I was gonna show you guys. Up, uh, let's go down to one of these. Update user information. Oh, topic completion percent. So define topic completion, completion. So this is how we calculate, you know, how much is the user actually done. So we come into here, client name, blah, blah, blah. Oh, actually, yeah, I lied to you guys. So the comma, we actually do end up using the comma. But later on, you could split by slash slash or something, and that would actually, <laughs> that would work just as good. So to get the topic completion percent, we pull the user information, which contains their tracking. We say tracking equals tracking dot split by comma. So we get all, you know, each element of tracking. If tracking is none, which is an empty set, again, that's not possible anymore. We were having some, I had a problem with that. I forget what the, if it was like after, lo, like after you, if you logged in, created an account, and you had no tracking, that's, I forget where it was going wrong, but it was causing a huge problem. <laughs> so anyway, um, and then now, let's see, completed percentages, empty dict. And then what we do is for each topic in that topic dict, again, this is why I have that topic dict which topic dict, if, you for, if you've forgotten already, is the result of, oh, I'm lost now, let's go, 
Let's see, is it this one? No. Uh, apparently, I don't even have it anymore. I don't know what I did with that uh, directory. Uh, topic dict. Oh, we can reference this one right here. Topic dict comes from the content management, right? Content topic dict. It returns topic dict way at the bottom. It's too long for me to scroll. But anyway, again, if you want to change anything, you just have to change it in here, and it's so much easier. And obviously, if you wanted to add new content, you'll have to change it in here, and then render. I mean, if you only added one page, you can write the init code yourself. Whoops. You can write the init code yourself. Uh, and then you could even do the HTML yourself. But if you added like a batch of tutorials, like for example, this Flask tutorial series, I'm going to just edit content management, add all of the titles and the URLs that I want them to correspond to, and then I'll run both of these, and then I'll actually add in the content when I'm done. So anyway, come back over here, just another example of why the topic dict works out for me. Uh, so for each topic, we basically are just doing a simple, we just keep adding one, and then we basically do a percentage complete being the int of the total complete over the total. That We convert it to an int just simply to avoid really long uh, decimals. But if you don't, um, never mind. Anyways, we do that so we don't have a bunch of decimals. And then what we do, th and this is for each topic in topic dict. So what does that mean? That's each of like basics, data manipulation, all that. So it's the whole thing. And then we just have a big list of tracking basically. So that comes into here. So completed percentages is a dictionary. The keys are the topics. The value is the percentage complete. At the end of that, we return completed percentages. This is a try and accept. Therefore, if we hit an exception for whatever reason, we're just saying 0, 0. Completed is 0, 0.0. Return basically just that 0, 0.0 <laughs> okay so so that way again if something fails in here for whatever reason um, it just you just don't get a progress bar okay so it's not like a detrimental thing and I'm trying to think if there's anything else really major to show here I think I've shown everything again this code by the time you're viewing this should be available either on pythonprogram.net it'll probably be on github and uh, if you can't find it or it doesn't exist, let me know and I'll put it up. Hopefully by this last video, I'll have everything up and hosted on pythonprogramming.net. So, uh, so that's that. If you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to let me know. Uh, also this, I just want to say, uh, I think I already brought it up before, but you can have multiple routes to get to the same place, okay? And on, uh, well, one of the things I did was when I moved pythonprogramming.net, which was originally WordPress, to uh, this website. Uh, what I did was in the 404, let's see, let's just do, uh, forget, I don't know what, let's see if we can get there, yeah. So this is your 404 error here. And what I go, what I did here was I grabbed the URL. So you can say rule equals request.path, and that gets the, the uh, URL that the user attempted to visit and then what I went ahead and did is saved that to just a little quick file that I created for myself so every time someone was served a 404 I logged that error in that page so I was notified as to what URLs were resulting in 404s you can do this for any error you want you can do it for every exception that's ever triggered you can save it somewhere if you wanted uh, you can do it for 500 errors. You can do it for any of the errors that are actually hit, right? So a lot of 500 errors will just result in a 500 error, not your custom message. But certain 500s will result in your custom message. Because some 500 errors are literally your server is inaccessible for whatever reason. So obviously you can't serve your code if that's the case. Anyway, uh, so that's how I was handling 404s. It's kind of a good idea, I think, because if you've got dead links somewhere that's just not good uh, so I was able to get 404s for every uh, for things so again so when I go to like um, let's just do dashboard dashboard like this these are all uh, well some of these were in a sitemap so some of them are sitemap things that I'm like working on so they exist in the sitemap but uh, you can tell robots.txt just don't go to it but that's I just decided to leave it there but in on WordPress I had a topics page begin I'm not really sure why begin was there I'm not sure when that came up but it was a 404 then I've got Python programming tutorials that's from WordPress and then of course dashboard which is the new version um, that's there so I wanted all these links to go ahead and just lead to dashboard 
Uh, and then as time goes on, you can obviously make new functions for them and send them to their own page. Uh, so anyways, that's that. Uh, this code, yeah, this code here might be, I can't remember if I covered this or not, but this was, this is old code. It actually doesn't need to be there anymore. Um, well, at least for you. Actually, it's not old code. I need this here for my first, like, 10 users that signed up. Uh, there was a, pro <laughs> a problem there, but otherwise, now this is not really necessary code. So if you're copying it, you don't really need that. Um, I can't imagine why anybody's directly copying this website other than for mean things. <laughs> so uh, I guess that's it. So uh, I'll probably add some more stuff as we go on. Uh, eventually, I'd like to have like a forgot my password or reset my password functionality, stuff like that. Uh, luckily, this website, I mean, you might want to keep your, you know, you keep your username just so you can track your progress. And so it's not like super detrimental if anybody happens to lose their username. There's really nothing more to it. But, you know, you should have a forgot my password <laughs> and a reset password. So maybe something like that I'll add soon. I don't know. Um, but otherwise, I mean, that's pretty much it. I realized these last few videos, I just basically showed you what I'm doing. We didn't really code it as we went. Um, I think this was the best way to do it just simply because this is a highly customized website straight from myself and I didn't really want to do a generalized website or use someone else's module for general purposes. I wanted it to be strictly for my own uh, uses and I, I think that this is really what makes Flask powerful because you can make your own back end and really you can do it. It's not a lot of code, right? It's not a lot of code. It's not I mean, you could call it hacky, but I don't really even think it's that hacky, honestly. Um, it's Most of it's dynamic, automated, it's easy, and it gives me all of the um, customization abilities that I really wanted to have. So uh, the only downside, of course, is if you had, say, if you're running a news website and you've got journalists, right, you're not going to give them root access. You're not even going to give them server access, right? They need to only be able to maybe post, <laughs> right, stuff like that. So it's so obviously, depending on your, your needs, things are going to change. But if it's just your personal website, um, you already have root access. Why would you need anything different, right? The best ACP, if you ask me, is right here. I mean, shoot, you go into here, you go into your t templates, your tutorials, write your pages, whatever, it's straight to server, no problem. You can write all of your code here. Like, it just makes sense, or at least it did to me. But that's why I didn't really want to spend too much time, because it makes sense to me, but maybe not everyone else. So I did just want to show how I did it, but uh, not spend too long or waste too, too much time on, on, on that. In the next tutorial, we're going to be talking about the cron tab, which is where we can schedule various tasks to run. This can either be scripts or actual commands, like you would enter them as if you were entering them via the actual uh, shell. So anyway, stay tuned for that. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and the subscriptions, and until next time.